Hey everybody, this is Brandon Lee coming to you with uh, some ESXi tips and tricks and uh, just wanted to post a video, uh, some interesting information coming from VMware. I uh, just wanted to highlight and uh, give you guys a possible easy way forward. Uh, if you're like me and you're running a lab environment or if you uh, have production environments running uh, on uh, certain boot devices. So, so what are we talking about? Well, VMware uh, published some updated guidance. Uh, it's found at KB85685. Uh, so 85685. Uh, and I'll, I'll post a link to this in the description. Um, but basically what VMware is saying on future ESXi um, releases, what they are saying is that uh, SD cards as well as USB devices um, are no longer supported as a standalone boot device. Now, what is that? Well, basically, uh, they no longer support uh, in an exclusive way having an SD card or USB device boot your server. Now, you can take certain partitions and run those from an SD card or USB device, but there are other restrictions having to do with which partitions. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail here as this KB article is gonna explain it really well. VMware has um, been re-architecting, if, if, for lack of a better way to put it, uh, the partitions and the way that ESXi boots um, and what they have boiled it down to is that SD cards and USB devices are just simply not robust enough to handle the reads and writes from those devices and that's kind of what I got out of it uh, these devices are just no longer uh, enough uh, especially for enterprise environments for uh, supporting exclusive boot from those devices. Now, uh, as you may be, um, as myself, I am still running uh, vSphere 7, uh, update two, uh, I think I'm on C, uh, or maybe D after this latest, latest update. Uh, I'm on vSphere 7, and I'm still booting from a USB uh, key just a commodity, consumer grade, SanDisk, uh, USB key. So nothing special. And while I haven't had any problems of, of late, uh, in the home lab environment, I have burned through quite a few uh, USB keys. And usually the way it presents itself, I'll go to update uh, ESXi, either through VL, uh, VLCM or Update Manager, and I will run into some weird, obscure error. And what it comes down to is that the update process is just not able to write to those uh, uh, USB keys if there is an issue. Uh, so that's how I've kind of always discovered it, that, hey, my USB key has bit the dust, uh, and sure enough, I'll reboot the host and come up with some other weird error that it can't load a, a boot file. So enough said about that, what is the way forward? Well, I, I posted a blog post that um, I was highly interested in the, in the process. Um, there is actually a USB uh, image utility, and I'm gonna put a link to this as well. It's found on Alex Coding Playground. Um, and evidently, independent developer uh, has this uh, image tool on the side. It's completely free. Um, and I read about the uh, this utility off of Paul Brerin's uh, TinkerTry website. And he had posted a, an article about how to back up your USB keys and actually keep a spare set uh, on hand for your lab hosts. Well, I kind of had that memory trigger when I saw this uh, guidance from VMware about USB keys no longer being supported uh, as well as SD cards. So I thought in my mind, what if you could take an image of your USB key with this tool and then actually restore that image onto a USB mounted SSD drive? 
So what I did is I bought um, <clears throat> I bought a cheap SSD, and amazingly off of Amazon, you can for twenty to twenty five dollars, you can buy a one hundred and twenty gig USB or I'm sorry uh, SSD um, for that cheap. And when it, when it comes down to it, you're you're getting a much more durable device uh, for your money. Um, and so for 25 bucks, you can have an SSD drive, two and a half inch, uh, just plain Jane SSD, but with much more reliability than you're gonna get from a, from a USB key or SD card for that matter. So what I wanted to, to show you guys is the USB image tool is just a simple download as a zip file, extract it. It has a uh, just uh, self-running executable. You don't even have to install it. And what it does is it, it comes up, it uh, recognizes your USB key. So what I've got here is a USB key from one of my lab hosts. What we can do is we can, as you see the simple options on the, on the bottom, we can restore, reset, rescan, and back up. And so for this first process, what I wanna do is back up. So when you click back up, uh, you have uh, the ability here to save your image file. So I'm going to name it just based on the host that I have. I'm going to say save, and then what we see is the utility making progress on creating an image. Now, it's rather slow on creating the image. I think last time for the last host that, that I saved an image for, it was around 10 minutes to save a, I think it was a 32 gig cruiser. Now, I think this host, due to some, once again, a failure I'd had, I had replaced it with a 64 gig uh, USB key. So as you can see, it's kind of crawling along here. So what I'm gonna do is pause the video. I'm gonna kind of get a rough time frame on how long this process takes for you guys. And I'll come back and show you how we can now after getting the image, dump that image onto an SSD drive. Uh, see you guys back in a few minutes. All right guys, so we are back. The image process finished uh, creating, uh, creating this image of this 64 gig SanDisk USB drive. And I missed the exact cutoff uh, time um, as I didn't see exactly when it finished, but it was at least uh, 20 to 25 minutes for that 64 gig drive. So not terribly fast, but when you consider what it's doing, uh, creating, uh, I'm assuming a block level image of, of that USB drive, it's a, not, a, not a quick process. So what do we do now? Well, we've got our image. Uh, what I wanna show you guys is there are a couple of options that we want to enable. And as you can see, I don't have anything else showing besides the SanDisk USB drive. So uh, what we need to check is show non-removable devices, USB hard disk drives. I'm assuming this is not a default because of the potential for danger of uh, maybe external hard disk that ones have mounted that they're not really uh, paying attention to what they're doing and it literally will destroy the data if you restore the image to the wrong device. Of course, here we know what, we're, what our goal is, what we're doing. Um, there's also a option that we need to check, fix GPT after restore uh, prevents partition re-enumeration. So this just helps to preserve our partitions as expected. Uh, when from our image when we uh, dump it back on so what we need to do as you can see I've got the Kingston SSD drive which by the way I pulled up on Amazon and this uh, is the drive and as you can see $24 for uh, just a 120 gig SSD which is plenty for what we're wanting to do here so again uh, pretty easy, inexpensive option to migrate away from USB key. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say uh, select the disk. Now I'm gonna say restore. 
it's going to ask us to pick the image, which this is the image I named based on my host. So I'm going to say open and it will prompt you, do you want to do this? So it's saying you got the image selected. Do you want to restore it? Which we do. So we're going to say yes. And once again, this process takes, um, it seems like the last time I did it, the restore was much quicker than the uh, capture of the image. And as you can see, it's already crawling up pretty well. So again, I'm going to pause the video um, just to save you guys the time to get to 100% and we'll come back and uh, revisit. See you guys in a few minutes. Okay, so the image restore finished successfully using uh, the free utility that uh, described earlier uh, from Alex Coding Playground. And what I love about this process is literally to migrate from the USB thumb drive that I was booting from to this SSD uh, only required shutting down the host, pulling the USB key, creating the image using this utility, plugging in your SSD and restoring the image. And literally all I had to do on my Supermicro server is just literally insert the hot swap uh, front bay uh, drive containing the new SSD, this Kingston SSD, which you can see here, uh, and turning the server on. And then you don't have to do anything with boot order or anything as long as uh, it's set to uh, pull your uh, hard drive that's installed uh, as a boot device. So that's all I had to do, just install the drive, turn the power on, and it knows no different. It boots off the same installation of ESXi. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it's really uh, going to be something that we're going to have to consider moving forward is the boot, de boot devices. Uh, no longer uh, can you use the uh, uh, USB key or SD card as a boot device. So hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you found something practical from this. Uh, this process could also, aside from ESXi, if you need to clone a USB disk for whatever reason over to uh, an SSD, uh, this utility uh, allows you to do that easily. Well, again, I'm Brandon Lee from Virtualization How To. Hit the like button. Uh, share your comments, and please do subscribe. See you guys soon.